Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today I want to be looking at the 2600K um, and how it compares to other processors. I'm going to be using AIDA 64 Extreme Edition. I'm going to do a lot of the benchmarking for my uh, results in real time so you guys can actually see what's going on. Um, my current processor, as will be labeled in the actual information, will tell you exactly what I have, is a 2600K of course with a 40 4.5 megahertz, about a 32% overclock over stock, which I believe is like 3.4. Um, I'm using a Z68 platform, as you can see, the Maximus 4 Extreme. It's a very good motherboard. Uh, has a lot of awesome features. With a very quick and easy overclock, I'll be going into that in later date exactly how to overclock properly, so you won't have to worry too much. Intel is a very easy overclock. Um, so is AMD. AMD is really not that hard. It's just a little more old school. So I'm going to give you a little bit more of the benchmarks. Refresh here. Now again, this is at 4.5. As you can see, this is the stock. And it's a pretty good jump. So that's the memory read. I'm going to do memory write. My RAM is also Ripjaws X uh, 1866. Uh, 16 gigs of that also. 16 gigs is excessive if you're not doing a lot of uh, heavy multi-threaded applications. Um, if you're just gaming, I would suggest that you get a uh, 2500K overclock it. If you're not going to be doing anything that's really intensive, there's really no need for you to go any further than a 2500K. So I'd suggest 2500K just for gaming. Um, you don't need 16 gigs of RAM. 8 gigs would be more than sufficient. It really comes down for gaming in most cases outside of Skyrim and a couple of other games. Your GPU is going to do most of the workload. So here you go. Here's another result. CPU photo works. CPU queen. Pretty comparable. If you bump this up to about 4.8, which is very doable also, um, it's just, it's really excessive for me what I do. But if you bump it up to 4.8, you will get a good margin over the um, i7-990X. There's a Zlib. This one can take a little bit. But as you can see, it performs pretty incredible. Uh, like, let's go back to CPU Queen. Some people use this, some people don't. Some people don't think it's a legitimate test. Um, but again, these are all benchmarks, and it shows off a lot of what you're really looking for in a processor. So we go down. Here's a Phenom times four, 940 black. Um, see the big. There's a pretty decent drop off. When I went from a Phenom, it was actually a 1090T that I had, it's a little better than a 1055, I overclocked it to 4.0. I was not anywhere close to these numbers, unfortunately, and it, a lot of people say, oh, you don't see the difference, you don't see the difference, that's, that's not true. Um, it depends what you're doing, but it's, even in games, which are normally like only a couple cores that are used, and not very CPU intensive, mind you, I did notice a big difference. Um, the frames in certain games like, uh, like Skyrim, for instance, um, even the general games that were more GPU bound, there was a, a pretty decent boost. You see, this one underperforms, but then again, look at what it's going up against. And it's not going to win every benchmark, of course. So I did notice a pretty good chunk of difference. For instance, if you go on, um, I don't know if it's Anatech, it's one of the major reviewing sites. They have a nice big breakout of the processor, the graphics card, and um, Skyrim performance. Skyrim is the biggest game right now, and a lot of people love it. They're going crazy about it, and this the processor makes a big, big difference. Um, you can really, it's really astonishing how big the difference is. Um, if you're using like a Phenom uh, to you know quad core, and even if you overclock it compared to like a 2500K overclocked, you can see anywhere from like 25 to 30 frames difference in some cases. It's pretty unbelievable that uh, this is so CPU bound in this day and age. So here's another test. We're getting to the end of the testing for AIDA 64 Extreme. 
Windows rates it as a 7.8, um, everything 7.9 except for the processor, which says 7.8. I think when I put it up to 4.8 or 4.9, it's 7.9, but the Windows scores really don't matter too much. They're not very relevant. Um, these benchmarks are far more relevant than uh, Windows, of course, but it just gives you a brief overview of what you're looking at. In my experience with what I do, um, I use Photoshop, Dreamweaver, I use all kinds of different graphic applications, you know, I'm messing around with all different kinds of things. I did notice a big jump in hyper-threading and a lot of the features that the 2600K had were worth it for what I was doing. But if you're just doing gaming or you're just using simple programs, you know, not really heavy multi-threaded programs that's not going to use the hyper-threading, there's really no point in getting the 2600K. So you're better off saving your money and investing in a better GPU. A lot of people already tell you that, so this shouldn't be totally new to you. Now, a lot of people ask about the bulldozer. Um, they ask about other processors that AMD makes. Unfortunately, AMD really kind of screwed the pooch on bulldozer. Uh, their per module or per core performance was actually worse than a Phenom 2. So, in you know, couple single thread applications, not heavy multi-thread applications, it didn't perform that well. And even in multi-thread applications, it didn't perform quite well. It's a very, it was a very ambitious concept what they did. Um, I'm not going to go too in depth with it, but they did go pretty deep in how different they wanted to be. And it could work in the future. I mean, with some revisions, I'm not saying pile driver couldn't necessarily be bad, but it could actually work. Uh, it's just that at this current time, it just, it seemed rushed and it really wasn't ready and it took so long. I really don't, there's no excuse for it. But the one thing that AMD has going for it is their ATI department, which now is known as AMD Graphics ATI. Their, that acquisition was an excellent acquisition. Now, it might not have returned a lot of money back to the company, but it's certainly they perform top end quality products. They can dish out just as much as NVIDIA can dish out. They can, they can hold their own in that market. They're very good. And that ATI partnership also brought one of the only good things that's left about AMD in the current time is their APUs. APUs are incredible and that's the future. So they're they're really pushing the APU. They're thinking the APU is going to be the future. Um, but that concludes the 2600K. A little bit of an overview, a little bit of other thoughts about AMD and you know when you're trying to hook up your system. I'll get more in depth. You know I'll start video editing, getting better stuff when I have a little more time. But you can expect about a review a day. So if you have any questions, just comment below. Uh, you can send me a message, uh, I can make video responses, I'll, I'm going to be designing a couple websites that will be catering to the builder and uh, I'm going to be making a website where you can build your own PC, so it's going to be some exciting stuff in the future, so just let me know what you like to see and I'll give you a heads up, but thank you for your time and have a good one.